Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Sisbidia Trude, and welcome back to Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion, where we are very literally in the end game at this point. In fact, officially, we're post the end game. The game has already said we've won, but I don't think we've won just yet, because there is one last horde that needs to be taken out. Somewhere in Locus Barbaricum, this area over here, the Slavs have emerged. But I think actually, it goes all the way over here. So they might actually start over here, where the Bodus Little Amazon Town exists in the base game. I think they might actually start over there. So it might take them a few turns to work their way through the swamps and whatever. Because, you know, there's no roads and whatever. So that's good. That gives us a chance to mobilize. Because none of my armies have actually moved since we took Constantinople. Although I did build up a small fleet just to stop the Eastern Empire counter-invading. Just to assist there being a bit of a status quo. So it's time for Emperor Gundobad himself to figure out how we're going to respond to this one. Though actually, hang on. Who's the factioner at the minute? Because the old person it used to default to was always Gratianus the Lily Livered. But he's dead now. Yeah, I didn't mention that because I didn't think it was worth mentioning. He wasn't really that important. He didn't do anything his entire life. Well, the game's given it to Marcus Flavius down over here in Spain. And uh, I'll say he's a very good governor. I'm not sure he's emperor material. He's just like chilling out down here, keeping the edge of the empire profitable. No, 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 no. The title of factioner needs to go to one of the triumvirate. The question is, uh, which one? Zeno or Lysianus? So, Lysianus, 49 years old, picking up a mining and military engineer. Good commander these days, gatekeeper. Has got pretty good at pillaging. He did take an eagle that one time, but there are questions about his loyalty, which is a little bit on the concerning side, Lysianus. Other than that, nothing major, fairly basic perks there. Let's go over to Zeno, see how you're getting on. A little bit younger, at 43. He's got a better retinue with him by a long, long way. Actually, that's a decent retinue. Obsessional trainer, so he's still got that bonus to movement points and morale. And also, he hates trousers. And quite right, too, everybody should hate trousers. Understanding of tactics for plus one to line of sight. Understanding of logistics, even more morale and movement points. Yeah, actually... I think it's got to be Zeno. Zeno Flavius is going to be our new faction heir. So, why do the Slavs actually pose a threat to us? It's because they're an extremely well-aimed final twist of the knife into a Western Roman Empire campaign. You see, if you've been playing the campaign correctly, you've probably been driving the barbarians further and further east, taking their capitals, driving them out of their tech and economic centres. But as a result of that, a whole bunch of horde factions are just chilling out over here in this part of the world with basically no ability to defend themselves. And the only reason we haven't finished them off is because we don't want them to hoard. And then along comes the horde who doesn't actually care about them right into the one bit of the world where the Western Roman Empire is going to be pushing all the other horde factions. It's very, very cleverly designed. So the nightmare scenario is, they actually hit the Burgundy, cause those guys to hoard. The Burgundy swings south and... Actually, possibly they would need to swing over here to... Uh, hang on, what else, do, what else do these guys actually have? Don't you guys have... Yes, there's totally a village somewhere around here that the Lombardi have. And it's going to be their last city momentarily. Because, yes, yeah, Sarmatians have taken that and they're about to take this as well. Sarmatians are doing really well. They're actually recovering very nicely. They're on a rampage at the minute, so I'm probably going to get worried about them soon. But yeah, potentially this village goes down too. Lombardi Horde. The Horde then swings through here, could potentially wipe out the Sarmatians. Sarmatian Horde. If they go over here, Frankish Horde. Never mind the Roxolani, who still only have one territory, they can hoard too. So theoretically, a maximum of six Hordes could still come into existence. And that's what I'm worried about. So uh, let's talk about the defences here. We got Campus Burgundii. This place has got basic stone walls, nothing too dramatic, but also a bridge. Actually, there's a bunch of bridges around here. Yeah, okay. So we might be able to put up a spirited defense on these here bridges. Now, Campus Burgundy is still pagan because they had the Sacred Circle of Wotan, plus they're experienced all troops trained here. So that's actually really good. And it also means the army here is a really damn solid army. These guys will kick some serious ass on that bridge. But my priority for the time being is probably information. I'm going to get as many spies out as I can and basically just send them everywhere. Wherever the Slavs go, I need to know about it. So the army here is pretty damn solid. Other than that, however, things looking a bit soft. The armies of Spurius Flavius, one was destroyed by the Saxons, the second was significantly damaged and reduced by the British campaigns. What survived made it back over here and was retrained at Augusta Trevorum. So uh, there's some decent units here, but not a full army really. 
Handful more units at Vika's Frankie too. I always maintained a decent garrison here, just in case the Franks ever counterattacked, though in the end they never actually did. So, between these two territories, we have another solid army right there, but it needs a commander. Now obviously we've got the Triumvirate down here, they'll be heading north momentarily, but I might need someone more nearby to manage the defence in the meantime. Obvious Flavius is actually still alive, which is quite frankly impressive at the age of 75. He's famously courageous in rude health. Yeah, this guy can stand and fight well. The problem is, he's going to drop dead of old age any moment. And some of the kids that have come through in the meantime are a sorry bunch by comparison. Yeah, you're very pious. I'm sure that'll help you against the Slavic horde. Okay, so due to a lack of competent applicants, I've slightly lowered the entry criteria for being a frontline general in the oncoming war, from being good at fighting, down to just being not actively terrible at it. So over here in literally the arse end of the empire that nobody cares about, we've got Vitranio Flavius, only 17 years old, but a skilled cavalry commander. Not much we can do with him yet, but... I do have a plan. I'm just going to start him moving towards the front. Because in the long run, I think we can actually do something with this guy. And Glycerius down here so far has just been a governor. But between having access to a mentor and being sharp, he does at least have two command stars. It's not bad. It'll do as a starting point. And with the highway network set up properly these days, uh, yeah, he can at least move around at a decent pace. He can pick up the forces in Augusta Trevorum, together with the forces in Vicus Franchi, and start moving that army towards the most likely upcoming front. And as for our main armies down over here, getting them to the front's going to be a bit on the difficult side, because uh, I don't actually control any of this territory, or this territory over here. So if I was to just follow the road system, I'd have to go all the way into Italy, all the way up here, and then back east again. So we might need to go directly over rough terrain through territory I don't actually own, which is maybe not going to go down very well, but we're lacking in options. That does, however, mean we probably can't really take the siege equipment with us. All the artillery is going to have to stay behind. And when you see it out on the field here, the Emperor's army is not looking spectacular, is it? I mean... There's plenty of stuff here that's basically totally inexperienced and just has plus one, plus one to weapons and armour. Not great. Not great at all, but it'll have to do. We need as much as we can heading north as fast as possible because it's going to take a while to get there. And same deal for Zeno Flavius, but at least his army looks a bit more on the experienced side. They've actually got some decent stuff there. And Lysianus can just stay in Thessalonica, ready to respond to either Constantinople or Athens if either of them come under attack. But mostly I'm putting my faith in the fleet to stop any form of counter-invasion there. Plus we just don't know whether we can trust Lysianus. 2 out of 10 on loyalty, I don't want to give him a big army. I'm not sure he can be trusted with it. Right, time to get time ticking along here because, yeah, the Sarmatians are on the warpath and uh, if we're very unlucky, they might actually trigger a horde all by themselves. Plus, I've got a bunch of spies in production right now. I need to start getting eyes on what the hell's happening in this part of the world. Here we go, the spies start moving in. Soon we'll have good visibility as to what's going on here. But, as I say, if the Slavs are over here, it's going to take them some time to get anywhere. The first logical target would either be this village here, or this one somewhere over here. And if they go over here, that's a problem, because that's a horde. A horde that's very likely to trigger the Roxolani horde, and then there's way too many hordes and I don't like it. Now, start dropping money on retraining. It's expensive, but I need every unit as strong as possible, please. This army that we've actually got, yeah, half here, and being retrained at Vicus Franchi right now, that's going to be picked up by Glycerius momentarily, it's not bad. It'll be able to do pretty well. That army, combined with the one currently sitting inside Campus Burgundii, they can put up a decent fight. And the main armies continue moving north, but as I say, that's going to be slow going. In fact, really, Gundobad might want to take his army up to Vicus Franchi for retraining. That's probably not a bad idea. One bit of good news though, the Sarmatians have called off the siege of Campus Lombardi, which is very good. I don't want those guys left exposed. That reduces the risk of mass horde. So, good. Stay away from those guys. Don't expand any further, please. Oh, never mind. The siege actually just restarted, but they got their asses handed to them in a sally. So, uh, that's good. That's absolutely fine for now. Oh, we've got new kids coming in. Right, okay. Cross your fingers. Good military commanders, please. Uh, so, Aurelianus. Slightly difficult name to say, and... Uh, not very good as a commander. Not very good as an attacker. Right. Terrible. Got it. 
and Anthemius. Good name. What are you, Lily Livered? Why is everybody Lily Livered? I swear that's the most common trait in the entire empire. I think cowardice is genetic. But then again, he does have an understanding of logistics and is a natural born general. I mean, surely we don't want to send someone who's got actively, well, he does love plus 10% movement points. And these two kind of counter each other. You know what, Anthemius, you're heading to the front line. Good luck. Though actually thinking about it, there's a scriptorium over in Ravenna. Anthemius, you just head in that direction, spend a couple of turns in the scriptorium, because yeah, you might pick up some good traits and good retinue from that. Plus, even better, you can pick up any forces I'm training in Rome right now, because we can get some good hardcore stuff trained here. In fact, you know what? If we need generals, I can just start training my own. We've got the money for it. Right, Imperial German Bodyguard. It's going to take three turns to make a general, but let's just see how he turns out. Meanwhile, Glycerius has made it over to the army. So, what do we have for him? Actually, you know what? We got some decent stuff here. So, give him all of the infantry first up. Let's actually have the army being laid out in a sensible fashion, please. Uh, so, even some Plumbatari right there. After that, one decent unit of spears, but we can probably train one more of them. That's absolutely fine. You know what? I'm going to give you a mercenary golden band. Those guys actually hit pretty damn hard. Add in a bunch of very skilled archers. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. There's some good heavy cavalry there too. Oh, Lysianus has decided to grow a beard. And it makes him look even less trustworthy. Dear oh flipping dear. Right, no, 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 no. Lysianus, you're getting on a bit. It's time to pass your retinue on to the kid. And this kid just goes and keeps an eye on Constantinople. Okay, spies all over at this point. Still no sign of the Slavs. So I'm guessing they're coming out of here at some point. And as for the frontier towns, get walls up. Let's just actually reinforce those walls as far as possible. Yep, that's true for literally anywhere, even Campus Quaddy. Get walls up there just in case. Oh, and this is nice. Zeno and Gundo bad have run into each other again, spot on. In fact, actually, there's a decent garrison at a Quincum. Not bad, but inexperienced. I should probably split it between these two guys, have them both actually head up towards... Actually, no. No, 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 no. Better idea. So, Zeno, you're heading straight for the front line, please. And as a result of that, next turn, I'll give you some of the experienced archers to take in that direction. Anything you've got that's inexperienced, hand that over to Gundabad. He's going to go the long way round and retrain them at Vika's Frankie. Which will also be true for all of these units right here. These six can just actually join in. No, we need to actually swap something out first. But actually, there will be space next turn, because yeah, two archers can go over to Zeno. And actually, Zeno's lacking in heavy cavalry, so a Quincum, you just actually train some new Sarmatian Auxilia. It'll be inexperienced, but it should still do the job. And there we go, second unit of Auxilia Palatina. Get these guys back in the army too, and oh yeah, that's starting to look good. That's a good solid front line right there. Toss in some extremely experienced archers, then even more experienced archers, leaving four slots open for, yeah, heavy cavalry. Get some cavalry right there, and some more cavalry too, and one more slot's available. But first, I've brought Valens Plinius over here. He was governing Britain, and he basically inherited all the titles that Placus the Horseman had. And I think it's time for him to actually pass those on. In particular, here we go, Dux Britannium, plus three morale and plus one to line of sight and plus one when fighting against barbarians. That is going to be a very useful benefit for this guy to inherit. Now, give him the last unit of cavalry and that there is a damn solid army. Oh, we've got eyes on the Slavs, or to be precise, they're diplomat. Fine, so we can be pretty confident they're in that part of the world. The diplomats got ahead of them because, yeah, agents have pretty generous movement point allowances, so uh, they can't be too far behind, though. Not too far at all. And soon, they're going to start hitting roads. Then they're going to start accelerating fast. And here we go. The first ever general we decided to grow in a lab. So this guy, Opius Maluginensis, good name, confident commander, Christian. Not exactly spectacular, to be honest, but he's not actively terrible, so uh, let's just leave him in Rome for a bit, see if he does well in a territory with a high-level academy presence. 
Also, I've just remembered, of course, why would I bother sending Gundo Bad all the way around to Vikas Frankie when I can just retrain all his troops up here at Campus Burgundii, which is just as good. So yeah, we're just actually marching everything north. So please don't attack us. I mean you no harm. I'm not attacking you. We're just passing through. And there we go. We got them. They're coming around the corner right now. They're about to enter the map proper. So, these guys are basically very similar to the Vandals or the Goths, pretty much. So, uh, yeah, we got Step Horde Chosen Warriors there. Same as we saw with the Goths, except, you know, slightly recolored. Uh, Step Horde Spearmen, Standard Horse Archers. Nothing too dramatic. Nothing we haven't seen before. But, we've been kind of lucky so far this game, actually. Consider that the Huns were badly damaged by the Sarmatians before we ever got to fight them, and the Vandals were badly damaged by the Goths before we actually ran into them ourselves too. The Goths, meanwhile, Marx the Gambler did destroy them very effectively at the walls of Aquincum, so that was one horde we did take out properly, but the biggest horde, the Huns, we never had to face them directly, and the Slavs are bigger than the Goths were. Yeah, we can see four full stacks right now, I think that might be a bit more round the corner as well. And the Sarmatians will just not stop picking at the Lombardi, which worries me. But with double silver chevron generals inside, I think that place should be able to stand. But there's more heading in this direction too. They might actually trigger the Lombardi horde all by themselves, which is not fun when it happens. Oh, and bloody hell, there's a massive army right here. Are you guys going for the Burgundy? Because if you are, that's actually... Oh, wow. Okay. Right, let's see if we can actually get confirmation what we've got here. So that is uh, five stacks, six stacks, seven stacks. So these guys are not nothing. The Goths were only about four. I think the Vandals were six total. The Huns may be at eight. So I think this might actually be the second largest horde in the game. Lovely. Oh, more kids coming through. Saturnius Flavius. Good name. And... Oh, hello. Lively and positive. That's actually really good. Plus one morale and bonus to movement points. Okay, we got ourselves someone good here. Okay, Saturnius, you head directly for Augusta Trevorum or Vicus Frankie, please. Just head over there, pick up the army we're currently training. Actually, with a bit of a better look here, these guys seem a little bit more on the heavy infantry side than I was expecting. That's... Yeah, that's a lot of chosen warriors, actually. Oh, yeah, plenty more at the rear, too. Fine. This is not nothing at all. If they want to come and try and take Campus Burgundy off me, this place is going to have... Yeah, it's going to have large stone walls momentarily, which is very, very good indeed. We've got a bridge to guard it in the meanwhile, and though it may slightly annoy the barbarians, I could try and hold this bridge too, just to try and make sure that nobody enters my bit of Europe. Though then again, there's a very decent Sarmatian army right here. Those guys could inflict some serious wounds on this lot. And logically, the Sarmatians would probably be the first target of the Slavs. So, uh, yeah, okay. They might be slightly softened up before they actually make it to me. Once again, the Sarmatians could save me from the full force of a horde. Oh yeah, we got a confirmed direction from the Slavs here. Looks to me like rather than heading south towards these villagers... Uh, they're heading straight to Campus Barbaricum. So that's going to trigger the Burgundii Horde. Now, I'm not sure how big that horde's going to be precisely, because that's not a huge town. So I've got the armies to deal with that. But if it's going to be the Burgundii and the Slavs, one after the other, that could be trouble. Because look at that, that's a lot of Slavs right there. In fact, hang on, that's actually seven armies. I thought it was six, but no, it's seven, possibly eight. These guys are no joke. Also, I was planning for you to become a better commander by hanging out in Rome, but no, you've just become slowly a better and better trainer, and also more and more Christian. Also, have you got the Pope with you? Why do you have the Pope with you? Put him back in the Vatican where he belongs. Now, remember Vetranio, who I brought over from Spain? This guy who's a skilled cavalry commander. Well, I've got a plan for him as well, because uh, Valens Plinius, he inherited the Horse Master from Placus, I believe. So if we just move that over, together with plus one command when commanding cavalry for another government official role, this guy's actually starting to get pretty decent when he's a cavalry commander. So, for the first time ever, I'm planning to put together an elite cavalry unit, exclusively for this guy who'll be the perfect commander for it. Here we go, Salmation Auxilia at level 3 with upgraded weapons and armour. Yeah, let's just start getting this into production over at Vicus Franchi. That is going to be some solid stuff right there. And down at Rome, we can get for the first time ever, Roman horse archers out too. 
And these guys are not bad in melee if they get caught out of position. And perfect timing, Ravenna can do the same. So Ravenna, you start training them too. And Anthemius is slowly getting better too, actually. Understanding of tactics to go with his understanding of logistics. Give him a bit longer in Ravenna at Military Academy. He might turn out to be good. We do have one problem, however. So, Campus Burgundii is supposed to be pagan. Because it has to be pagan. Because those are the rules it needs the shrine. But, there's too many people who are excessively Christian around here. Ah, oh, Spurious Flavius is smiling at us from heaven. And I bet it's flipping Gundabad because he's got really Christian in his old age. He's currently travelling around with an Anchorite, an Augustine the Hippo, the most Christian hippo that ever Christians. Actually, Gundobad, would you mind just standing over here and just actually converting Campus Lombardi? Which shouldn't actually be a huge problem whatsoever. Yeah, just stay there, that's absolutely fine. Because we also need to get your army retrained at Campus Burgundii. Xenoflavius is mostly fine. We might be able to do a bit of retraining, but momentarily, we should have four full stacks of really solid, decent XP troops. That's going to be nice to have. And bloody hell, depending on what's about to happen over here, we might well need it. Oh, I've slightly taken my eye off the ball down here in the south, actually. Alexandria is under siege. There's basically nothing there. And these guys are attacking with a large but extremely weak army. I think possibly this might be an army that's just got back from retaking, yes, yeah, Cyrene off the rebellion over there. So, uh, you know what? I'm not going to sally. I'm just going to let them attack me. If they want to attack, that's fine. Alexandria has, uh, is it large or epic? Epic stone walls. We might be able to win with walls alone there, quite frankly. As for Jerusalem, we just hunker down. If they want to attack us, we'll defend ourselves. But I'm not going to go any further. At this point, my attention is overwhelmingly on the north. Okay, this is good stuff here. Mass retraining going on at Campus Burgundii, and uh, we've got Gundobad standing just over the border. So, how are we doing on conversion? Okay, we are actually holding Pagan for the time being. So, Paganism is going to start overtaking Christianity again in this part of the world. But, Campus Lombard is looking a bit messy, actually. So, the Sarmatians still want to take it, but the Franks have just walked in. And that worries me a bit. And as for the Slavs, they're sort of heading, yeah, midway between Campus Barbaricum and Vicus Vandali. So, I'm not actually sure which territory they're going for at the minute. They could go either direction. We'll get a better idea when they actually hit the road. Oh, flip, the Franks are actually moving to attack us. Okay, that's a surprise. I mean, Gundobad can defend himself and he's got a good army. And I think your army is... Okay, your army is really dependent on peasants and levy spearmen. I would not have done this if I were you, but all right then, fine. I'm willing to murder you if you insist. I mean, all these years, they've just been sitting there not attacking Campus Quaddy. This is the moment they decide to make their move. All right, nice flat battlefield. Forest over there, but I don't need to fight in it. May as well just fall back and fight on the flats, because I've got archers and they don't. Right, nice long line. They've got plenty of infantry, so just for safety. The cavalry, however, that's going out on its own. That's just going to sweep round and murder them. Now, how are we doing in terms of line versus line? Looks okay to me, and yeah, bear in mind, a lot of this is spearmen and peasants. They will not be able to break through a common to 10 says line. Here we go. They're happy with their position. They're now moving in. So, that is spearmen right there. That is... What's that? Is that a golden band? That might be a golden band. And then peasants, peasants, peasants. Lots of peasants in the middle. And don't forget, yeah, fair few generals. There are actually two general units. Not bad at all. So they do actually have uh, spears on both flanks. So I can't just use my cavalry freely, but there are plenty of places I could just throw it at some peasants. That's not too bad at all. In fact, some of their heavy cavalry is over on this flank. So if their cavalry is over on this flank, I want my cavalry to be over on the other. Because my cavalry can't take out their warlord, but against, yeah, just basic infantry, they should be fine. So you guys just get over there, please. Uh, the front line can hold for the time being. Here we go. That's like a good point to actually hit them. Sufficiently far away from the paladin bodyguard, they won't be able to do much. Quite a distance away from the nearest group of spearmen and archers just behind. They do have two units of archers, so I would rather they will remove from the equation. So here we go. Peasants and in comes a giant pile of cavalry. The idea is basically just to cause these guys to break and then immediately push through 
onto the archers behind them. You guys can break as well for all I care. There's going to be nearby breaking peasants, so uh, you're not going to be happy. Uh, that is... Oh, that's actually another bodyguard back there. Sorry, I didn't realise you actually had a third bodyguard. And that's, of course... Hang on, I'm not sure. Okay, you know what? You guys, uh, head over here. If their general is actually going to try and, yeah, break through the front line, we'll actually just hit him in the rear. So just start moving in that direction in case that's what they're having to think about right now. But, looks to me like, actually, Paladin Bodyguard is uh, not actually wanting to commit, understandably. So, uh, pull away for the time being, in which case, actually, you guys, just hit these peasants and then start mopping up the... Oh, there's more Paladin Bodyguards over there. Right, you guys, fall back, fall back, fall back, and uh, you guys do the same. I don't want these guys to get caught out of position. Uh, there is actually some light cavalry in there. And actually, no, hang on. No, that's their leader. Right, get the light cavalry on top of them, please. I want them chased off. So, get over here. Get these guys dead, please. I do not want them coming back. You, keep these guys busy for the time being. I think they're trying to actually cover this guy's retreat. But that's heavy cav, and I've got lights right there. You are not going to be able to do that. You cannot outrun me. Down they all go. Just a matter of time until we get him. Come on. You guys, hold these guys steady. And... Come on, finish him off. There he is. 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 And stab him. He's right there. He's right there. Somebody stab him. There we go. Well done. Right, that's one of their leaders dead. Uh, rest of you guys, uh, pull back at this point. Pull back, pull back, pull back. There's no reason for you guys to take casualties unnecessarily. Just get behind the front line. We've got plenty of archers at this point. Okay, seems like the cavalry have pulled out fairly effectively. Uh, yeah, these guys have already taken some knocks. That paladin bodyguard is down to 25. Uh, you guys just fall behind the main line over here. More cavalry's coming in, so bring the spears around the outside. And no, uh, that was just raiders, actually. Get these guys into a more aggressive position. We're not being flanked on this side, so... Uh, what are you guys doing? They're probably retreating, actually. Yeah, they're probably just giving up at this point. Because they did start this battle, so they do have the right to retreat from it if they wish. In which case, may as well ride them down, to be honest. But yeah, 55% of them dead to only 3% of me. Very good battle there. That's about what I was expecting. And though we're in the forest now, so I can't really see what's going on. Gundo bad. Yeah, you can help yourself to some easy kills. You might be able to pick up an experience point or two. Which could be very useful for your survivability going forward. Oh yeah, that's a lot of good easy kills right there. Love it. And continue the battle please. I want a few more of them dead. And good work right there. Oh, yeah, nice. In the end, only 600 survivors of the Franks. That should pretty much secure Campus Quaddy forever. And the Slavs are on the move again. That's really looking like Campus Barbaricum, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Right, we've got Burgundy Hordes on the way soon. And this force is actually making a move on Alexandria. Yeah, go on then. I'm just curious how this goes with the walls. So they have got themselves, yeah, one tower. That's literally all they've got. It's a single tower. And then also a handful of ballista. I've got some archers over here. But bear in mind, of course, that tower is going to do catastrophic, awful damage to anyone it fires at. So uh, I don't want to be standing in front of that tower. Instead, I'd like to be standing nice and safely over here. Send the camels back to the plaza just to keep that place safe for the time being. Now, my one unit of Comet 10 says, these guys are actually pretty strong. What are you sending upon to the walls? Comet 10 says all of your own. Well, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to send my Comet 10 says uh, over here, nice and out of the way where you can't shoot them. So, their tower will now make its way over to the wall right here by the Luxi of it. And uh, they're also going to try and take down my towers first, which unfortunately they might be able to do. Yeah, they're going to be able to do that for this tower, but the gateway is a much tougher proposition. I don't think they're going to be able to knock down that. Ah, with Onager support, though, possibly. Actually, it's only a single Onager. I'm not sure a single Onager is going to be able to do that. I think they're going to run out of ammo first. Still, they're doing the clever thing here. They're not advancing until they've used up all of their ammunition. Nope, Onagers are done, and we've still got, yeah, 30% of our health left. So, Ballistas are not very effective against Gateways. I think they're not going to be able to do it. They're going to have no choice but to advance against a still operational Gatehouse. Though just for safety, I might just bring my camels around for a bit of a light poke. 
Nope, never mind. They are out of ammunition. So at this point, they are moving forward. So uh, these towers are still operational. These ones aren't, but the ones in the middle are, which is good. Very, very good indeed. So they're going to start moving over here. The tower's going to move into position. And now I'm going to move my fresh troops over here, ready to block them. Because they're going to move into this position right over here. So you guys just stand right there. Move as fast as you can, please. And this is what we actually want. In fact, actually, I'd rather have you... Yeah, about here. I'd rather have you about right there if you'd be so kind. Because then these guys have an open shot right across here as the troops as they come off the towers. That's why I wanted these guys in this position. And we can keep an eye on how well they're doing in terms of climbing the tower because, uh, yeah, we'll see them over here before they move in. And it's going to take them a moment to draw up before they even try and get inside the tower. And, oh, that's a gateway for you. That's a gateway. Right, and there's no glitch on level 5 towers, so these guys are 100% safe to move inside. But they have taken some knocks already. That is a lot of Comet 10 says and Plumbatari, by the way. Arguably a bit too much. They might be able to push their way inside anyway, I'm not sure. Though actually, the gateway is continuing to attack the tower. If the siege tower falls and reaches 100%, that's it. They're done. In fact, actually, I don't think they're attacking the siege tower directly. I think they're sort of hitting it accidentally while trying to hit the units on the far side. But if this reaches 100%, that's it. They're done. And here we go. Troops are starting to gather right over here, which is good stuff. And my troops are ready to open fire. You guys have got a shot over there, right? You better have a shot. Oh, here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Right, guys, uh, stop fire. So archer fire is being laid down on these guys. You guys are... Uh, Fight, 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 fight. Well, archers just shoot them in the back together with crossbows. Are you actually in range? Guys, why are you not firing? Guys, fire, please. Fire. You guys fire as well. I want everyone to continue firing. So, here we go. It's going to be crossbows in the back. That hurts. That hurts a lot. And these guys are already wavering because of artillery fire and all sorts of fact. Actually... It's morale that matters more than anything. You guys, go over to Flaming Arrows. I want these guys hit in the bag by Flaming Arrows and also Armor-Piercing Crossbow Bolts. That's good. These guys can't stand and fight for too long here. They are already wavering. Come on. Panicked by Artillery Fire. And momentarily actual fire too. They don't like this one little bit. The gatehouses are also firing around the corner at them. This thing's up to 38% damage right there. Love it. And oh yeah. Fire. Artillery. Archers. Crossbows. All sorts of... I think I'm hitching my own guys in the back. But uh, no. Yes I definitely am. Guys be careful with your shots please. Please be very careful. And these guys are down to 51. They are fighting well, but then this is very hard, very hard. So the enemy does straight up cheat. If this were the other way around, these troops would have broken for me a long time ago. Here we go. They're sending up archers. Right. Interesting choice of secondary unit to reinforce the Comet 10 says, but whatever. They are really keen to get to the front, by the way. They are desperately running into fire right now. They're probably going to break momentarily. Siege towers at 45%. If I can just destroy it, that's it. The job is done. In fact, actually... As soon as these guys stop... Guys, what are you doing? What? No. No, no, stop. Don't do that. Don't run into direct combat, please. Uh, just take them out by shooting them with the crossbows, which you're holding. Guys. Guys, come on. Don't just... There we go. There we go. Yes. No. Maybe. They're really not sure, are they? No. No, they're really not sure at all. Right, guys, just, just get back over here. Get back over here, please. You can start firing again in a second. Right, troops, fall back. My comments 10 says are very badly damaged at the minute. Archers, uh, change your target over to... Ah, you're slightly out of range of the siege tower. Right, guys, move just a little bit further forward. If we can actually destroy the siege tower, that would be for the best right now. Why is my unit breaking, but their unit isn't? That is not reasonable. Right, crossbows, uh, congratulations. You're now going into hand-to-hand -hand combat because you're completely bloody useless. Here we go. You guys just hold there as best you can. Archers, uh, keep laying down the fire on the siege tower, which is up to 69% damage. 70. Come on, guys. Set it on fire. Let's get that thing burning because... Uh, if it burns, that's it. All they've got is what's already on the walls. 72. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Actually, I've got 87 camels. 
it's not much, but on the plaza, they can't break. So that gives me at least a little bit of an advantage. 72, it's not going up. Guys, why? Why is this a thing that's happening right now? Actually, this is... You're technically the general's unit, aren't you? Right, okay, that's interesting. They are taking some damage here, but it's light damage and these guys are breaking too now. Right, okay, so we've lost the walls, but how much do they actually have left at this point? We've killed 54% of the enemy and some of what's left is actually the artillery. So they are definitely taking a battering. Right, guys, change your targets over to these guys right here. Flaming arrows off if you'd be so kind. Our general has been murdered. Yeah, just keep firing. Keep firing over here. See what you can do to actually, yeah, just knock these guys out from the rear. You'll do a good job shooting them in the back. So just go for that. Use up all the arrows you've got. They're wavering, apparently. I don't think they're going to break because the AI just cheats, but whatever. We'll just keep shooting them. We are at least doing a decent amount of damage, and these are proper heavy infantry. And right now, they are literally trapped between artillery and archers. So, we will be able to do some good amount of work here. I mean, just look at that. Look at that right there. Down to 70 already. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Down to 65, 60. Oh, yeah. They don't actually have that much left, to be honest. That's Legio Lanciari, 23. What's left? There's Blumbatari, 83. If we can just actually cause these guys to break, that'd be magnificent. But you're out of ammo. That's a shame. Right, the archers have done what they can, but they're at the limit of their ability. Get over here. At this point, the best thing you can do is just try and stop them from taking the gatehouse for as long as possible. Never mind, the gatehouse is gone. Right, guys, 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 guys. Get over here. See if you can defend this tower right over here. Just, uh, actually, are you going to be able to do much there? Probably not. In which case, guys, fall back to this point because this tower's got windows that face inwards. So, if they chase you over here, you might be able to do a bit more damage that way. So, small number of forces heading towards the plaza. Archers just staying over here. That is, that is Plumbatari. Plumbatari versus archers, but... I tell you what, we're going to do better than they probably expect just because of these towers right here. These towers will stand and fight and fire all day long. Actually, hang on, are they, are they going to advance or are they actually just going to go down onto the street at this point? I'm not sure. Right, you guys, uh, get over here. Your cavalry, so you may as well get a good charge in when the moment comes. So, yeah, just get into this position, please. Uh, how are the Plumbatari doing? They're not moving forward at all. Just got a bit of a standoff right now. Guys, what on earth are you doing? Don't do that. Just stand right there, please. And here we go. We've got the ballista bolts coming in right there. Doing some good work. That's nice. Panic by artillery fire. Don't shoot the archers, please. Stop doing that. Don't do that at all. So these guys are going to start taking some damage very, very fast indeed. In fact, actually, they just broke. Oh, this is nice. This is good stuff right here. These archers are going to be the big damn heroes over on the plaza. What have you guys got left? Because it looks to me like there's barely anything in the main force that's going for the plaza. Handful of spearmen, two armored camels, a handful of mercenary crossbowmen. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And these forces are now collapsing, which means the walls will just pick them off. Love it. Right, what have they got left? Because I could actually win this. Ah, here's the problem. The 70 comet 10 says down over here. They're going to be the difficult bit, yes. Oh, especially as that's the captain's unit, so that's bonus morale. Oh, that's going to be the one that wins it. They're going to win this, but it's going to have been close, damn it. We did better than we had any right to do. All right, camels, let's see if we can just see off some of these guys, because at the bare minimum, we should be able to do that. Wait for them to get on the plaza, though, because then you've got a much bigger advantage than you would do otherwise. And in we go. Charge of the Camels. You don't get Charge of the Camels very often, but screw it. We're going to get it on this occasion. And uh, actually, the Armoured Camels want to go in first. Fair enough, I suppose. Armoured Camels versus Camels. Uh, give them a damn good stabbing. Down to one and back off. Get the full charge bonus. Don't get hit by the Peeler. Back off, you stupid losers. Right, get over there. Get over there. Get over there. Get out of range. Get out of range. There we go. Run, 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 run. They only got a handful of peeler off there. And now, turn it around. Hit him with the charge. So, just come on, guys. 
In comes the Camel Charge. Oh, yeah, the Elite Camel Charge. And boom, sends them flying. Beautiful. So they are wavering. They're reloading. 2018. And routing. Good, 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 good. Right. So that's those guys taken care of. The mercenary crossbowmen are just going straight in with swords. They don't care about crossbows. I don't think they're going to stand up to much, however. No, they are breaking. Leave them be. I'd rather have them nearby to pass on morale debuffs to the Comet 10 says. Speaking of which, where on earth have they got themselves to? Ah, uh, here we are. They're looping around over here. Where are the archers? We need the archers to get onto the plaza as soon as possible, please. Okay, we've only got one chance here. My units are only warmed up. These guys have got to be tired by now. So we might be able to win on exhaustion. That is literally my only chance. So hopefully these guys are as tired as I'm thinking they might be. And here we go. They're approaching. Guys, charge. And then as soon as you're done charging... Back off and charge again. We just need charge bonuses over and over and over. I can't remember how good the charge bonus for a camel is, but they're cavalry, so it can't be too bad. And steady. Yeah, they're exhausted. They're exhausted. There we go. Down to like... Oh, they just broke. Oh, flip, they've actually broken. I think we've won. I think we've actually won. Okay, that unit's not coming back because we can just ride them down at this point. The archers are here to... Oh, the archers are here to close the trap. Screw you, you stupid bastards. You shouldn't have attacked my city. We're going to build a statue to Captain Maxentius because he has delivered us victory. Is there anything actually left on the walls? Because I don't think there is. I think it's just a giant pile of corpses up there. I think it's nothing but the artillery. And camels can ride down artillery. Flip, we've actually won. Oh yeah, hang on. The camels are actually going to that gate over there. Because I don't own this gate anymore. That's a bit embarrassing. Right, in comes the camel charge. And did you just break? Did you just break immediately? In the face of a handful of onagers. What the hell is going on here? What's going... They own that tower. Oh, flip, hang on. Okay, so this is... This is going interestingly. Right, guys. Guys, back off. Back off. Lead them into this tower. This is a more friendly tower. Except I think they might be... I think they're giving up. I think they've abandoned the siege. Take out the onagers. I don't want to see them again. They were a bit on the dangerous side. Oh, it's victory from the jaws of defeat from the jaws of victory from the jaws of defeat, if I'm recalling correctly. Spot on. The gods have favoured you. The enemy are destroyed. Your victory is complete! Oh, voice correct narrator man got all excited. This was officially a heroic victory. I'm thrilled. Hang on. What's going on here? The Roxolani have been destroyed. I thought they were a horde faction. Aren't they a horde faction? No, they're not because they weren't actually killed. I assume somehow through a combination of... Old age, assassins, maybe plague, all their leaders died, which I believe is the only way to stop a horde faction becoming a horde. So uh, they've just gone rebel. Okay, that's a bit of a surprise. I'm not really sure what happened there. Hang on. Deploy my spy into that bit of the world. I don't know what happened there. Very bad timing indeed. My spy that was hanging out near the Slavs has died. I'm guessing he was assassinated. But we do have other spies in the area. So... Uh, yeah, they're going for Campus Barbaricum. Absolutely, that's where they're going. Also, hang on. Does anyone know what happened to the economy? Because I swear I used to have more economy than this. Okay, I did some repairs in Alexandria, but they weren't that expensive. Hang the flip on. What is going on here? I was easily clearing 10 to 12,000 denarii a turn just a few turns ago. What has happened to all the money? I mean, we've had a bit of plague down over here, but it shouldn't have been that bad. Okay, break down a handful of expensive troops over on the edge of the empire we don't really need for anything. Like, say, these spears, they're rather expensive, all things considered. So, okay, not really sure what's going on here, but I don't like it one little bit. Oh, the Eastern Roman Empire are coming in for another bloody go. Dear, oh dear. Right, we beat them before, we'll beat them well. I say we'll beat them again. I wasn't actually able to repair the Comet 10 says because the urban barracks were damaged. So uh, this time they might be able to do it. Then again, that's nothing but peasants, so maybe not. Okay, the economy's recovered a little bit off the back of me just breaking down some troops, but I need to watch out. It's still not in healthy shape at all. And uh-oh, Sarmatians, please don't attack the only remaining Frankish city because... If you do that, you're going to trigger a horde, and I could really do without that right now. 
Still, the Slavs have now reached the road, so I don't know where it is they want to go, but wherever it is, they're going to be making it there much faster than they've actually got a path to walk along. Well, the Sarmatians are moving straight into, yeah, the ruins of Campus Roxolani, and... Hello? The Slavs are completely ignoring the road, and where on earth are you guys going? There's a good chance they are just going straight for me. That is entirely possible. Because it looks like they're heading for this bridge and this road, but... That's bringing them too close into Europe and too close to the centre of my empire. Right. If they're planning to do that, I have no choice but to basically block up this bridge, even though I don't actually own either side of it. Right, Gundabad, bring on both those mercenary golden bands and start moving into position, please. Mark. You need to be ready to block up that bridge. Zeno, you head south and be ready to reinforce him. We're going to have two good armies at the north bridge, two good armies at the south. Yep, yeah, they're definitely crossing the bridge, but they're not going for the southern bridge either. Hang on, we need to figure out where it is they're going because I can't remember if they've actually got a programmed in preference or not. They should logically do so, but oh dear. We are struggling to maintain control of Jerusalem right now. Got it. In fact, we've got no chance of holding that whatsoever. So in which case, we should probably just take the army out of there and find a new home for them. How about Antioch? Antioch sounds fun. There we go. Cancel all forms of games. Actually, I could go for daily games and races, but no, we're not bothering with that. Whack up the tax rate. That place will go over to Western Roman rebels. And actually, they'll generate a decent sized army because there's urban barracks and whatnot here. Okay, so if they're following this road, it only leads to this one bridge. Beyond the bridge, one path leads to the Frankish capital. The other leads down into, yeah, Sarmatian territory. And beyond that, oh, not a quinkum again. Not a quinkum a bloody again. Right, okay, this is... This is going to get difficult fast. I mean, on the plus side, they're not triggering mass hordes. That's good. Unless they're about to trigger the Frankish horde, which they might be about to do. And beyond that, Campus Quaddy is not in good shape. Right, okay. So, leave the force at Campus Burgundy where it is. Everybody else, down south in a hurry, please, because I think we're actually not positioned correctly right now. Here we go, this is right. So, these forces... Just rush to try and counteract wherever it is the Slavs are going. Campus Burgundy is still very capable of defending itself if need be. Oh, the Eastern Empire are giving Alexandria another go, however. This time with, yes, basically nothing. Good luck, guys. Then again, I've got basically nothing too, so this is really going to be down to the wire. Same basic principle, however. We just want to wait for them to arrive. Then we move our infantry into position after that point. And then we just start shooting them all in the back with archers. Except this time, ah, they actually haven't been able to take out this tower because they've got no artillery with them. Love it. And just wait for them to get into position. And guys, guys, are you okay? Guys, have you figured out how siege towers work? And oh, oh, yes, yes, there we go. They figured it out. Right, you guys, uh, get over here. Fast as you flipping can, please. Lovely. And the archers, uh, you guys just start shooting them the moment they start coming out of the top. Oh, they're sending peasants up. I love it. And as for anything that's left down over here, it's being shredded by the wall defences. Here we go. We got ourselves some peasants right over there. And we got ourselves some archers ready to lay down the fire. So you guys, you should have a nice big shot right there. And... Uh, in comes the fire. Peasants cannot stand up to much here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't like that one little bit, actually. So, panicked by artillery fire. Panicked by everything else, too, hopefully. Right, one of you. Go over to fire arrows. Let's see if we can break them. Come on, guys. Let's just break these guys apart. And uh, they haven't broken yet. That's ridiculous. All right, my peasants would have broken before they even made it onto the walls. Right, I think they've been finished off. So, you guys... Uh, Pull back for the time being. The next unit is about to come in. Plumbatari, 21, but they've been well damaged. Oh, yeah, hugely damaged by the actual artillery on the walls there. Love it. And here comes more fire. They're already... Oh, they're shaken. They don't like this one little bit. Guys, uh, just stab them if you'd be so kind. And uh, that unit has basically been eliminated already. They cannot break into this city. No chance. And in comes yet more peasants, more meat for the grinder. Oh, no, never mind. The siege tower just fell over. That's instant victory for me. 
Love it. That went very well indeed. And this time, we can actually retrain the Comet Tensers. So, yeah, let's just reinforce this place a bit. I think with just a handful of heavy infantry and some archers, we can hold this place for a while. And the Western Roman Rebels are back on the map. Screw you guys, have fun breaking into that city. Naturally, of course, the Eastern Empire has immediately allied with the Western Roman Rebels. But honestly, that kind of works for me, because that means you guys don't get Jerusalem back. Now the question is, uh, do I want to try and race them to any of these bridges? Because, how far can you actually move? Okay, this guy might just be able to fight me if I move my troops to right here. And you don't really want to go taking on a horde in the open field. But, hmm, do I want to do that? Okay, you definitely want to move around over here. And you want to follow them as fast as possible. And damn it, Franks, why haven't you built paved roads? I'm not sure if they even physically can. I can't remember. But it would be helpful if they had, actually. Okay. I'm going to bring my main army right here. Because I think I can handle that. And then I can start bottling them up on this bridge. Hopefully, anyway. And if it goes wrong, well, that's not good for Gundabad. Because he's going to be a long way behind enemy lines at that point. Also, bring my assassin down in this direction. He's not very good, but... He might be able to pick off one or two family members if we're very lucky. And begin rearming a Quincum. I feel like this place might actually, by hilarious historical coincidence, turn out to be the place where we take out yet another horde. You see, the thing is, I've got to try and hold this bridge. Because if I can't hold this bridge, at that point, there's no more bridges before they hit my territory. They can walk straight up to Campus Quaddy. Though beyond that, actually, there's this river right here, which doesn't have too many crossing points at all. This is my secondary fallback point right here. If they're actually marching into my territory, then pretty much the plan is try and make them bleed on this bridge. We won't be able to win forever, but we can make them bleed for a bit. Then give them hell at Campus Quaddy. We won't be able to hold that either. And then defeat them at either of the two bridges nearby to a Quincum. Potentially with the final fight happening outside of Quincum itself. All right, big question. What's going to happen next with the Slavs now? And also, hang on, we've got ourselves... Okay, they're... Ooh, are they attacking Sarmatians right now? Have they been temporarily distracted by the Sarmatians? Because we might be able to get in their way and... Hang on, the Eastern Empire is... Okay, we got a bit lucky there. But the Eastern Empire is really trying to build up a fleet right now. We've got to be careful. We've got to be really careful. Also, officially, Patrick has introduced Christianity to Ireland. I'm going to be honest, Patrick... You may have actually been a little bit late there because uh, Spurius Flavius beat you there by a couple of decades and the job's already kind of done. Yes, the Slavs have attacked the Sarmatians. Good. That'll slow them down for a bit. I don't know whether that means they're going to turn back and actually attack these towns, but at the bare minimum, it does let me get into position. Gundo Bad Norbanus, you know what you're doing. You're doing what all Western Emperors do. Standing up to the Hordes directly, damn it. Caius the Horde Slayer did it. You're gonna do it too. Make sure the reinforcements are nearby as well. We need to block up the bridges. Though, they might try and flee south. Hang on, how do the roads go around here? Ah, if they go for these roads down here, there's a road that leads, that is, yeah, down to Sarmatian territory. And then we've got a queen come right here. We might want to send Glycerius Flavius down to Aquincum just to prepare the defences here. But for the time being, the message is clear. You are not welcome here. Naff off, please. Here we go. So the force that abandoned Jerusalem, Antioch. It's standing right here, pretty much unguarded. That is totally free real estate. All right. Are the Slavs going to take the bait or are they turning back to deal with the Sarmatians, which arguably could be worse? Because if they wipe out the Sarmatians, the Sarmatians are going to hoard. And that also brings them towards the Lombardi. Though those guys will give them a good fight. That wouldn't be too bad. And oh, hello. Oh, there's a real mess going on here. So if the Sarmatians can't take the old Roxolani capital, then bloody hell, the Sassanids really want it. Now, do we have our first battle versus the Slavs? No, they are. Oh, they're just heading further and further south. Right. Okay. I think we know exactly what's going on here then. They are making a run down over here towards possibly a Quincum. I'm not even sure anymore. But actually, they can't go this way because zone of control from Xeno Flavius. That'll do some good work right there. Okay, in which case, Gundo Bad, abandon that bridge. Start fleeing south as fast as you can. We need to stay ahead of them. Still, 
If the problem is that we're being outmaneuvered, that means I need a more maneuverable army. So it sure would be convenient if the massive hardcore heavy cavalry elite force of Vitranio Flavius were completed right now. Yes, that'd be really damn good actually. With over a thousand heavy Sarmatian auxilia, with good experience weapons and armor, bit of light cavalry for the flanks, and horse archers with silver weapons for the first time ever in our armies. Oh, that's just beautiful. Oh, bloody hell, these guys can make it to Salona in only about three turns. That is just spot on. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I would say that is enough for now. The Slavs are very much on the field. They have started to pick fights with anyone that gets too close by to them. And now the only question is, uh, where and when are we going to fight them? Emperor Gundobad Norbanus is ready to defend Aquincum as so many of his illustrious forebears have done before him. Malzino Flavius is ready for the fight of his life. No improvised army on this occasion. He's actually got some proper troops and he is ready to wage the first battle against the Slavs if they choose to attack him. Will that fight happen right here, ladies and gentlemen? Or are we going to keep chasing them down south? I do not know, and we will find out next time. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Rome Total War with Barbarian Invasion. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This, this guy's enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear! And then oh, in come the chariots! Yeah.